and welcome to the Armour 2 Operation Arrowhead Editor Tutorial. Here, we're going to create a simple mission, taking a look at all of the tools at your disposal. First off, let's place a single unit. Select the Units tool, or press F1, and double click on the map where you'd like to place your new unit. We get a few options to set, including the unit side, faction, and type. For the moment, these are the only options we need to worry about. As with many editors, shortcuts like Ctrl C and Ctrl V will work. Once you've placed a unit, it's possible to open up the interface and make additional changes. To create a group with a leader and subordinates, select the Group tool or press F2 and link the intended subordinate to the desired commander. So here we've created a small blue 4 patrol. I guess now we need to give them something for which to look. To place a group of OP4 units, we also use the Group tool, this time double clicking on the map where we'd like to place the unit. We get fewer, but all of the important options are set. Select OP4 in the side parameter. Click OK to place. With the unit selected, holding SHIFT and the left mouse button lets you freely adjust its direction. To get the blue 4 patrol moving, let's select the Waypoints tool or press F4. Choose the group of units you want to move and double click on the map where you'd like the waypoint to be set. The Waypoints interface offers several options. As a quick example, let's set the behavior. As for the OP4 ambush, we'll set a short route and assign the combat mode. To get the OP4 group to move at a particular time, we can use the triggers and synchronization tool. Let's place the trigger on the patrol's route. The trigger interface allows us to set the size and angle. Other parameters can be set. For example, to indicate that the trigger has been activated, we can play some music. We need to link the trigger to the group which will activate it. Using the Groups tool, drag from the trigger and drop on any group member. Using the Synchronization tool, drag from the trigger and drop on the waypoint. This enables us to sync the OP4 ambush and start the group's progress along its path of waypoints. To set the ending condition of the mission, we again deploy a trigger. In this case, we'll set a large area and check for the presence of enemies. When there are no enemies left, we'll end the mission after a random delay, specified by the min, mid and max range fields. To add some extra details or information to the mission, we can use markers. As an example, we can alert the player to potential enemy activity in the area. These icons will appear on the map in-game. If you deselect the Markers tool, the markers will be hidden. To add some extra environmental effects to the mission, we can use the Modules tool. Let's add some post-process and particle effects. These are great tools for adding extra feeling to your mission and depend upon the time, day and weather. The post-process effect will change the colour of the environment. Particle effects will add subtle weather effects, such as dust, mist or snow depending on the time of day and year. As a finishing touch, we should add a name and description and set the conditions for the mission, including weather, time and date. To set these options, click the Intel box and adjust the parameters as required. Check back with us next time to learn some more advanced editing techniques, such as scripting, using advanced functions and randomization. Well, that brings us to the end of this tutorial. I hope you'll be inspired to create some of your own custom missions in Armitage, Operation Arrowhead.